Praise God, I want to share something with you now, just from the Bible, and then we'll go back into maybe another worship song and a time of prayer at the end. In the Old Testament, there was a man called Habakkuk. Habakkuk was a prophet. Now, a prophet is somebody who in some way hears from God. Now, in the New Testament era, the, the gift of prophecy is, is, I suppose, more regimented and more, um, you know, um, it kind of explains it all a little bit more. But in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit could come upon people, but it couldn't, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't dwell in people. Because that only happens through, through Christ. Because the only right we have to have the Holy Spirit in us is Jesus' death. Because of Jesus' death, I'm, I'm completely forgiven and God gives us gifts. I mean, in, so in the Old Testament, um, the, an Old Testament prophet would hear from God. And we don't really know exactly how it would happen. Some prophets were told, um, was we told in their book exactly how it happened. But Habakkuk, we don't know. Some of them may, may have seen God. Some of them, well, I mean, seen an angel of the Lord or something. Some of them would have heard the voice. Some of them wouldn't. Um, but, but how it happened, it happened. But Habakkuk was a man who was a prophet and he heard from God in a very difficult situation. Um, and my title is, Is It All Okay on the Bridge? Habakkuk 1, 13 to 15. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? You have made people like the fish in the sea, like the sea creatures that have no ruler. <coughs> the wicked foe pulls all of them up with hooks. He catches them in his net. He gathers them in his dragnet. And so um, he rejoices and is glad. So Habakkuk saw a a situation around him where people were being treated badly and it seemed as though God was doing nothing. You know, in the country here, it, it, talks, it talks a, a really um, a strong line here saying, look, you know, um, this is happening, this is going on. Why doesn't God do anything? He's, he's weeping. And as far as he was concerned, at the beginning, the disaster that was taking uh, place, it didn't seem as though God... Um, could do anything about it or wants to do anything about it. In your life, when bad things happen, suddenly happen, out of the blue, you know, and you, you're walking through a shop in the middle of the town somewhere and you think, I can't believe that's happened. And everyone else is carrying on as normal. And, and yet, you've had this disaster. And Habakkuk was looking at the horrible things that were happening in his land. This is uh, an analysis from... Um, a concordance says this, Is God really good if the world is so unjust? This is a central question the prophet Habakkuk reels, uh, uh, wrestles with. He calls out to God, asking him to deal with human evil. But he's angry when God doesn't deal with the unjust nations in the way that Habakkuk thinks he should. God reminds the prophet that God will deal with evil in every generation. We can continue to trust in his timing and his plan and remain faithful to him. God's timing is, I suppose, absolutely everything. And my title is, Is It OK on the Bridge? There was um, an analysis many years ago, and it was an illustration, a Christian illustration that I heard about uh, an admiral on a, a fleet of ships where, you know, there were cannons coming in left, right and centre and ships were crashing into each other and people were drowning. And it was all going on, the war was going on. And he ran up to the bridge and said, is it okay on the bridge? And the, captain's, the captain and his assistant said, yeah, it's all fine. So then he walked back in peace. If it's all okay on the bridge, then in a sense, we should have the peace to carry on. I've been on the bridge of a 747, Boeing 747 down to Hong Kong bridge, I mean cockpit, you know, many years before 9-11 um, before happened when you can go into the, the cockpit. And... I was just quite surprised, A, by how small it was, and B, by how young the pilots were. It's these two Australian blokes, they didn't look much more than 16. And they were just laughing and joking. I was thinking, there's a, it's like 300 people in the back there. And, you know, and these guys were, were two, and one, one, one was on autopilot, and they were looking down at something over China. I forgot what it was. I thought, my goodness me. I'm, I'm really trusting that these guys know what they're doing. But they did. And what Habakkuk realised is that 
It can be okay on the bridge, and I'll explain that. Three things that happen. See, the Habakkuk um, disaster here, and, and the way he looks at it happens in three stages. Number one, you observe the calamity. The calamity happens in your life, you observe it. Chapter 1, verse 13. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? It just seemed absolutely horrible. The, horrible, the nasty things were happening all around. Men and women who were, supposed, were trying to be good and try to live humble lives in the land were being treated so, so badly. Um, you know, a few years ago there was a, a situation where... Um, Afghanistan went completely belly up because of what happened there and people who had had freedoms the freedoms were being taken off them and it just all went all went around and I remember somebody giving this analysis and quoting stuff from Habakkuk on, on the news and, and simply saying you know um, uh, evil evil sort of carries on while good men uh, do do nothing we had this takeover here and it was it was an awful situation it was terrible but the first thing is you observe the calamity. Stage one, you see the calamity happen. It happens. It's awful. It's absolutely awful what happens. And you know, and you know what I'm talking about, the sort of things that you've, you've experienced. But quite often when a calamity or a disaster happens in your life, after a while, after you've put it through the God equation, after, God, after God's quotes and uh, God has dealt with it, after you've prayed and you've maybe fasted or, or, or read the Bible and got somewhere with it, when you look back, it seems smaller. It's kind of, you've got used to it now, and it's gone, it's gone further away. When I look at um, the house that I used to live, um, this picture of it is on the internet, and everything seems smaller. The garage looks smaller. The, everything looks smaller. And when you look back, after, after God's dealt with it, after you've given it to God, it looks smaller. So stage one, observe the calamity. Stage two is the best and most important thing, and, and the vital thing. Stage two is then observe God, straight away. Habakkuk 2, 1 to 3. I stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and will ans what answer I am to give um, to this complaint. The Lord's answer. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. I will certainly come and will not delay. God will, you, you need to observe God at that point. People that have, I've, I've known uh, one person recently I knew had had a quite an extreme diagnosis. He, thought, he said to me, my goodness, God, why has this happened to me? I said, I just don't know. But people tell me that when really bad things happen, to move to the situation where you observe God is important. So Habakkuk then knew that God was kind. Do you remember the thing that uh, Allo used to song, sing during communion? In the, in the, I'll probably get the words wrong, you have to correct me at all. But there was this man in, in the Philippines who was part of the worship team and he used to sing, he was one of the singers on the stage. And it's, it's a song you've probably heard anyway. I think I've heard Southern Gospel singers sing it, but, it's, it's, but I've, I've heard it sung elsewhere and it's brilliant. It's, God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, when you can't trace his hand, uh, when you don't understand, is it something like that? Trust, trust his heart. I'll probably get the words somewhere. So in the end, trust his heart. When you don't understand, uh, when you don't know his plan, sorry, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. And so Habakkuk came to a point where he observed God. He knew this was happening. His people were being attacked by the enemy. It was awful. But he, ob he, ob he sort of moved to the point where he ob just observed God. I used, to, I, I, had my, I used to have my own special place, a place where I used to, uh, used to drive to in Guernsey, where when things went um, went belly up and this happened or that happened. There was a place I used to uh, drive to, car park at Lee Island, looking across. Um, but I'd just park there and I'd just, and, you know, and I'd, I'd, park, I'd get out of the car and walk and I'd, I'd think, I can't believe that that's happened. I can't believe that I had that letter or that email. I can't believe that this has happened. And I'd just observe God. I'd say, God, you're mighty. Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for me. I'm so grateful. Thank you. 
I thank you for the fact that ultimately you have a plan for me. I thank you for the fact that your plans are good. I don't understand what has happened, but I know that you are in control. And so number one, observe uh, the, the disaster. Number two, observe God. And number three, observe peace. Observe peace. Because um, the, the third one, the third thing that happens, when you've observed the calamity, when you've observed God, you, 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 the peace comes. It doesn't happen straight away. You suddenly become, it's, just, it's bizarre this is, you suddenly become aware of somebody with you. That per, it's God. How, you can't see anybody, you can't hear anybody, but you know, you know that he's there, you know that he's with you. You know that, you know, you know, you know that the presence of God <coughs> is there to be with you. When you look back, you know that he's definitely been there. Habakkuk 3, 16 to 19. I heard and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound. <coughs> Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet I yet will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation inviting us. Though, oh, you love this one. Oh, though the fig tree does not bud, and though there are no grapes on the vines, Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no, full, no food. That was difficult stuff they were going through. Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. That sounds like a bad day to me. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Saviour. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet. See, although all this has happened, he says, it makes my feet like that of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. I mean, if you, if you read nothing else in the Bible but that in one day, that would encourage you. So that ultimately, this God that you've, you've got this relationship with, which you're allowed to have a relationship with, by the way, God doesn't look at you, he's not angry at you. If you've got faith in Jesus Christ, you, you're totally forgiven, you're accepted. Each of us then has a, has a different relationship with God. Some of you in this room have been Christians for years and you know the Bible back to the front. Some people you probably know, know the, you probably just feel like a real weak person trembling Christian, like I feel sometimes. But ultimately, you, you can, he does that. He meets you, makes your feet like that of a deer. He enables me to tread on the height. So maybe, let's say Thursday this week, one of you get an email or a letter or a phone call, or this happens or that happens, or this happens in the news. You think, oh my goodness me, this is awful. Observe the calamity. Observe God. And then observe the peace that he will send and that he will bring into the situation. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes in the vines, uh, God will still do all these things. Um, and it talks about the peace that can come from God in different other parts of the Old Testament. Number 6, verse 26, The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Um, and further down, uh, Psalm 55, 18. He has uh, redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many against me. So ha what I would say here is that when we look at the problem that Habakkuk had, it's probably one that we've all got. I mean, people now would possibly, and I don't want to get into politics, look at the situation in the Middle East or other parts of the world where just... I mean, I'm, not, I'm not going to get into politics because if you do, you have half the room agree with you and the other half of the room wants to chop your head off. And I've experienced that before. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, um, we have a situation all over the world where bad things are happening. You think, why has this happened? Why has that person happened? Uh, why, sorry, why has that person done this? Uh, why does this person have a, you know, a bad, a bad disease? What, why, why did that person die? Why are these things happening? I know of two people uh, once of the same age, a man and a woman, a single man, single woman. The single man uh, was about 24 years old and his mother passed away. The single lady was a similar age and her mother passed away. He ran close into God and she ran far away from the Christian faith as possible. It's perspective. Perspective. If you run into God at that point, I would simply say um, um, it's the best thing you can do. Do you feel like you're in the middle of calamity? calamity? Number one, stay positive. 
continue to hope and pray and continue to flourish where you are planted. You know, where you're planted. If you're, pla- if you're somewhere, then that means God wants you there. Be the best you can be until God moves you somewhere else. So I want to leave that with you today. Is it okay on the bridge? When you get home, will you have a quiet time with God? Will you have, a, you know, um, a, a quiet time in the morning? Will you, have, will you have a time tomorrow where you are on the, bri- the bridge, meaning that you're, you're quiet time with God? Will you have that? <coughs> um, you know, if you really want to spend time with God and the, the level that you give to him, uh, you know, I believe he'll give you greater back. Give him time. Give him time tomorrow. Don't worry, I, I can't solve your problems for you. Some of them I can try to and I'll probably be disastrous, but sp- try and spend time with him tomorrow. If you have a simple prayer and he's there, he'll be with you. I remember years ago, I can't, I'll, I'll not finish with this. Uh, years ago, I, I, I was in Derby and Princess Margaret, when she was alive, we well, would be when she was alive, wouldn't it? Um, she came to visit the city and open some new, uh, some new civic centre or something. And there was loads of people running down the road just to see her, because she's a famous well, member of the royal family, and p- people running down the road. And I thought, look, look at that. Um, a famous person comes, everybody wants to be there. You know, um, and I suppose we should have a similar attitude to spending time with God.